In my last video, I showed you how to clone a PC or hard drive using CloneZilla Live. In this video, I'll be showing you how to image a PC or hard drive using CloneZilla Live. So disk imaging is similar to cloning, except the drive being cloned to is being saved as a file or folder. This file or folder is referred to as an image or disk image. The data from this image can then be restored to other hard drives with all the data, partitions, and file system information. A lot of people use disk imaging to quote unquote reinstall Windows without having to set up their programs and system settings all over again. Imaging is great for disaster recovery. If something happens to your PC drive and you have a backup image of that drive, you can get back up and running in a very short period of time. To create this disk image, we will again be using CloneZilla Live. If you need to know how to create the bootable USB, check out my last video or watch my video on creating bootable USB sticks with Rufus. With CloneZilla Live installed on USB, all we need is a hard drive or USB flash drive to store the image on. You can save this image to anything, USB flash drives, regular hard drives, SSDs, NVMe, whatever that you have. Like in my last video, I'll be making a disk image of my web server and storing it on an external NVMe drive. We'll then take that image and restore it onto an SSD that I have and then boot that drive up in my laptop. All right, so here is my server. Just to see what we got going here. You see, we've got our Windows 11 Enterprise here with a size of 256, and we've got our Clonezilla disk. And this is the drive I'm going to store the image on this crucial NVMe. Let's go ahead and restart and boot into the boot menu and start up Clonezilla. In my case, I'll need to press the F7 key to get into the boot menu. All right, now we're in the boot menu, and I just need to select the PNY USB, which is what Clonezilla is stored on. We're back at Clonezilla. Go ahead and select the first option here. You want to make sure that the device that you want to store the image on is already connected. Unlike with cloning, there is no limitations on the source and destination. So like in the clone video, the destination had to be equal to or bigger than the source drive. That's not the case with imaging doesn't matter. So we'll go ahead and select our language, English, keep the keyboard layout the same, and we'll start Clonezilla. We want to select the first option because we're trying to do a device to image. So we're going to be working with images. And we'll select local dev to use local disks. Here Clonezilla is telling us to insert any storage devices that we want to save the image to. I've already got my NVMe connected, so all I have to do is hit continue, press enter, Shows us the drives. We'll hit Control C. And Clonezilla starts looking for all those drives and partitions. Next, we need to tell Clonezilla where we want to store the image. In my case, I'm going to store the image on this one terabyte crucial NVMe. So I'll go down here and select that. Do we want to check this disk before we start making an image? I'll skip this for the sake of this tutorial, but I encourage you to do that when you're making a real image. Next, we need to select where we want to store the image on our destination drive. I've already gone ahead and created a folder called disk image. And that's where I will store this image. So I'll go to that, then we'll go to done. And we're using the tab keys here to go through these menus. We'll hit continue. We'll go in beginner mode. Here we can choose to save the disk or select partitions. I'll just say disk. And we can give it a name. I'll just stick with the default. Hit OK. Next, we need to select our source disk. And that looks right, the 256 Crucial SSD. That's what I want to image. So hit OK on that. And we need to select our compression. The default is perfectly fine, so we'll hit OK on that. Do we want to check and repair the source disk? I'll skip that. And I'm also going to skip checking the saved image after it's created. Again, I'm only doing this to speed up this video. But when you're making your own images, you want to go ahead and select those checks. I will skip encryption, so we'll not encrypt this image. And what to do after the image is created, I'll tell Chromezilla to ask us what we want to do. But you could reboot or power off the system or enter the command line. This is a Debian-based system, so at the end of the image, you can access the Linux system with the command line. Hit OK on that. Enter. Gives us a summary of what's going to be happening. It's going to take that 256 drive, select all the partitions, and create an image. 
Are we sure we want to do this? Yes. And it will go into this screen where it will show you the progress of each partition as it's being created within the image. The first couple of partitions, the recovery and reserve partitions will be the quickest. And then it will take quite a bit of time, depending on your storage device and the speed of your storage connection to create the main image with all your data. Again, it shows you the device size, space that's being used. So we have 90 gigs of space used on this partition with the Windows operating system in my data, but the compression is really good with Clonezilla. So this 90 gig partition will be basically cut in half almost when it's actually stored in the image file. So we'll let this run and then come back. I also want to point out that that bottom bar will go very slowly, but once the top bar reaches 100%, that bottom bar will jump to 100% as well. I also want to point out that Clonezilla Live also displays the time that it will take to create the image along with the rate of data being written. All right, so the imaging is done. It's cleaned itself up and all we have to do now is hit continue. And I'm going to just go ahead and power off the system. And we'll come back and look at what we have on the drive. All right, I'm back on Windows and we have our crucial entity of me, the disk image folder. And we see that the image that Clonezilla made is right here. And this is all the image files that Clonezilla made. We look at the size of this image, we see that the amount of space that we used was, remember, about 90 gigs. So it turned 90 gigs into 30 gigs, which is insane. But this is actually quite nice because it helps save space on your storage device that you use to save your images to. So now that we have this image, let's go ahead and restore this image on a blank hard drive. I'm going to restore this image to a two terabyte SSD. So reboot the system and connect the device that you want to restore to along with the device with the image and Clonezilla. And we'll boot back up into Clonezilla and start to restore. All right, we'll go through the setup again. We'll select our language, our keyboard layout, start Clonezilla. And again, we want to work with images, so we'll select the first option. Local dev is fine. Make sure you plug in the device that you want to restore the image to. Control C on that. Now we need to select where our images are stored. In this case, it's going to be on my one terabyte crucial NVMe. So we'll go through here and we'll skip checking and locate the folder where our images are stored. And we'll go to done. We'll choose beginner mode. And for this step, what we want to do is restore. We want to restore to local disk, so we'll select the third option here. And next, we need to select the image file. We only have one, so we'll go ahead and select that one. Next, where do we want to restore this image? We're going to restore on this two terabyte SSD. You want to be very careful which disk you select here, because everything on that disk will be erased. I'm going to use create partition table proportionately. I'll skip checking here and make Clonezilla ask us what we want to do when we're done. Hit enter on this, hit continue. And it's asking us if we're sure. We want to erase everything on this two terabyte SSD, I say yes. It's asking us if we're absolutely sure, yes. And it will prepare to take that image and write it back to whatever device we want. In this case, my SSD. And after that, we should be able to take that SSD, put it in my laptop and try to boot it up. You want to generally image a computer and restore it back to the same device for best compatibility. Otherwise, you will need to download additional drivers. So we'll let this run. And when the restore is complete, we'll come back and boot up on the laptop. All right, we're almost done writing this big partition to the disk. Let's store the image successfully. All 
Now it's writing this other partition. It's complete. It's cleaning up. And shortly, Clonezilla will ask us what we want to do. Go ahead and hit continue. It will power off. Now we'll go ahead, once that's powered off, we're going to take this drive and put it in a laptop and see if it boots up. All right, I've got the disk inside the laptop and let's boot it up. And here we are. Let's go ahead and log in. And success, we're in the system. Go to the PC. You see our Windows Enterprise disk with the two terabytes. We've got our NVMe that's also inside the computer. And so the clone was successful. Now again, when you restore from an image, you want to make sure that you update your drivers if necessary and also run Windows updates because it might have some additional stuff that needs to be downloaded, especially if you restore on a completely different computer. In upcoming videos, I'll be showing you how to use RescueZilla. This is a much more user-friendly version of CloneZilla that allows you to clone image and use Gparted, a disk utility that lets you format and partition disks. I'll also be doing a video showing you how to load up CloneZilla images in Windows and browse the files so that you can restore some data without restoring to a physical disk. Yeah.